Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to worship at First United Methodist Church here in Stuttgart. Uh, it is a delight to have you all with us on this, per, uh, on this special day, whether you're here in person or you're joining us on our live stream or our Facebook live feeds. It is a delight to have you in the house of the Lord with us today. We have an incredible morning planned. We have our confirmands. Uh, we were supposed to have done this back in May, and we kind of had to keep pushing it back, pushing it back, pushing it back. But uh, today is a day that we are going to uh, hear and see some of our young people profess their faith in Christ and to acknowledge Jesus as their Lord. They're going to take the vows of membership uh, and become members uh, of the church. And so it's going to be a great, wonderful day. And so I want to thank everybody who has come uh, to be part of that. It's going to be a, a wonderful morning. I uh, also want to let you know that uh, we are doing confirmation today as well as next Sunday. So uh, we've got another batch of young people who are going to be doing the same thing that we're going to do here a little bit later next week as well. If you don't know by now, we are going to be kicking off in a week of 40 days in the Word. It's a church-wide spiritual growth emphasis where we want to get as many participants into the Word for 40 days, six weeks, uh, and see how the Lord transforms our lives, takes us to a deeper place in our walk with the Lord. And so if you've not signed up for that, if you haven't thought much about participating, I want to encourage you to do so. I'll have more at the end of the service uh, about that and how you can participate. There's several different options, so... Uh, just be ready for that. Uh, having said that, I want to pray, and then we're going to start with some worship this morning. Let's pray. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, you are an incredible God. I cannot thank you enough. I, I just can't thank you enough for what you have done in my life and what I see you doing in the lives of others. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us with a desire to worship you. Give us a hunger for more of Christ. Give us the ability to be able to be faithful to Jesus all the days of our lives. Now come, Spirit, and fill us with your presence that we would be able to worship Jesus in spirit and in truth. In the name of Christ, I pray. Amen. Would you please stand? Shine, Jesus, shine, fill this earth. 
may be seated this morning. I have been looking forward to this day for a long time, probably not as long as some parents have, but it's been a long time in coming. I wanted to ask our confirmants something, and really this is a question for everybody who's here or who, who's, who's with us uh, online today. Um, is there a particular sport or a hobby, an activity, an art that you are really taken to, that just drives you, that, that if you could, you wish you could make it to some higher level in? Uh, maybe it's playing basketball and you, you want to be part of a team that's going to take the state championship or you want to play in collegiate sports or you want to be an actor or an actress, something like that. Um, and for some of us who are a little bit older, maybe we had one of those dreams early on <laughs> and we've kind of lost sight of that. Was there something in your younger days when you wanted to be the first in some spectacular, you know, some event, something that you really liked? I want to know what that was. And so what I'm going to ask is on the count of three, I want you all to share with me what that activity was that you wanted to be first in at some point in your life, okay? One, two, three. <laughs> Blasted masks. Um, I, I couldn't hear that. So, so, so help me out again, and, I, and I, I realized I didn't say mine either. So on the count of three, let me know what that is, right? One, two, three. Football. All right. Mine was football, and I didn't hear again what anybody else said. But the point is, we all had something early on in our lives, maybe even today, that we really want to pursue, that we want to be the best at, that we would love to be recognized for, we want the award for, we want the ribbon for, we want the trophy for, right? Typically, there's something in our lives like that. For me, it was football. For my son Alex, it was track. Alex, is a, he's got a set of wheels on him. He's, he's fast. He could not run his dad when he was young, and he did something wrong, but I suspect that is where he first got his training for running and track. He's a sprinter, and I'm telling you what, the boy can run. He's got a set of wheels on him. In fact, when he was running for Gravit High School, uh, every year that he ran in track, he set a school record multiple times each year that he ran, and so each year that he ran and he broke a record, he was typically breaking his previous record from the previous year. So he was really good at what he did. But he didn't take that lightly. He trained for it. He was disciplined in preparing for it. I find myself wondering, you know, if Alex were here today, what would he say to you and to the rest of us about pursuing that activity in our life that we really want to excel in. So I just want to simply introduce you to my son, Alex. All right, all right. So some quick tips if you want to play or run in college. Uh, number one thing is definitely dedication and motivation dedication and getting your schoolwork in on time. That's going to be on you. No one's going to be telling you to do it in college. So schoolwork, your training for whatever sport you're doing. Again, if you miss a practice or something, that's on you to get it in. Other thing, eating healthy. You got to be dedicated in the way you eat. Um, eating right, cutting out bad eating habits, cutting out junk food, and then as well as sleeping right. And then also just staying on top of if you have work or anything like that. You're going to have extracurriculars all the time. So be dedicated. All right, I got to get going, back to training. So based on what you heard Alex just talk to you about his collegiate athleticism and playing at the college level, running at the college, what do you think the takeaway would be for you if you were to tell some of your teammates that you play with? What advice did he just give that you would want to pass on to them? if you guys wanted to go for the gold, if you wanted to go for first place instead of second place, what was one thing maybe he just said that you could take to heart? I want you to think about that. 
You know, it's kind of interesting. We may not realize it, but actually the Apostle Paul, as I like to refer to him as Coach Paul, says the same thing when it comes to living the life of a follower of Jesus Christ. He talks about this dedication that Alex talked about to a bunch of Christians in Corinth. In fact, I want to share some words with you from a uh, locker room pep talk that Paul had with those Christians. But first, I want to invite you to pray this prayer with me as we get ready to, to read and hear from the Word. Join me. Blessed are you, Lord God Almighty. Thank you for the gift of Holy Scripture. And now, if it's not too presumptuous, grant me the ability to hear, to understand, to be, and to do what it says. Amen. I'm reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, beginning in verse 24, and this is from the message, so a little bit different translation than I typically use. You've all been to the stadium and seen the athletes race. Everyone runs, one wins. Run to win. All good athletes train hard. They do it for a gold medal that tarnishes and fades. You're after one that's gold eternally. I don't know about you, but I'm running hard for the finish line. I'm giving it everything I've got. No sloppy living for me. I'm staying alert and in top condition. I'm not going to get caught napping, telling everyone else all about it, and then missing out myself. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. All right, here's Paul's big idea. He's in the locker room. He's addressing some Christians, and this is what he's got to tell them. He wants Christians to know that they are to approach living as a disciple of Jesus Christ with the attitude, with the commitment, and with the tenacity that professional athletes put into being first. Let's just let that kind of sink in. He's talking about commitment here. He's talking about approaching living for Jesus maybe in a way that a lot of Christians haven't really considered. He's telling the Christians to give it everything you got. He says to run as if you were running to get the prize. In fact, it's kind of interesting. In his text, he talks about only one gets the prize. So I find myself saying, well, one gets the prize. Well, what about second place and third place? Well, in the background of who, who Paul is addressing is the Isthmian Games. It's the Isthmian uh, Peninsula that's in, in the area of Corinth. And they had these track and field events, these gatherings, almost kind of like a, a, a pre-Olympics. But it was a time when athletes would come from around the area and compete. The issue here that Paul brings up is that for the Isthmian Games, there was only first place. There was no second place or third place. There was no silver medals or bronze medals. There were no ribbons for every, you know, um, uh, that they gave to everybody who participated, kind of as thanks for being here and running kind of a ribbon. There was none of that. For those athletes in the day of Paul, it was first place or it was no place. To quote who I'm assuming is one of Robin Koenig's athlete heroes, Ricky Bobby from Talladega Nights. <laughs> if you're not first, you're last. That's the situation here that Paul is bringing up. That's, uh, that's what he wants the individuals to know. To run as if you're running for first place because there is no second place. Imagine this. Imagine, um, imagine you're a coach or a director of uh, uh, whatever activity it is you really enjoy the most. You're in charge of preparing others for an event football, basketball, a drama, a choral program, whatever it might be. Uh, I'm just going to use football because I'm more familiar with that. Um, what would happen if you were a coach and you went out and uh, you were watching your players and they're all out there practicing and 
you notice that there's a player over here who doesn't seem to be given at their best. They seem to be taking it easy. They seem to be kind of looking around and trying to, to get out of some of the practices. You know, they're the ones who maybe show up late or who are cutting corners out there. They're the one maybe, this, this is the person who uh, about halfway through practice every, every day kind of oh, pulls that hamstring or, or twists that ankle and has to go sit down for the rest of the practice. And so the coach notices this and the coach goes over this to the student and says, hey, I, what's the matter? It doesn't seem like you're taking this very seriously. What's up? And the student says, oh, coach, that's because I'm training for second place. I mean, what would you think? Uh, who does that, right? I mean, who trains for second place? Anybody? Nah, that, that's not the hope. We don't go into to practice and, and training and giving it what we think we're giving it because, boy, that silver is looking so much better than that gold. I want to be listed second in the newspaper not first. Who does that? Well, apparently, in today's text, there are some Christians who are doing that when it comes to the way they live for Jesus Christ. And Paul's noticed that. And so Paul, using a, an athletic sports metaphor, tries to draw attention to this fact that they seem to be giving Christ their second best instead of their best. But Paul wants them to know, I think what Paul wants all of us to know, whether we're confirmands and we're putting our faith in Christ and we are making a commitment to Jesus and to the church today, or regardless if we're somebody who has done that and did that years ago, he wants Christians who are going to follow Jesus to train hard instead of hardly train. In our text, he says, run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. Right? Athletes, serious athletes, whether those running in junior high or high school or college or going on be, uh, beyond that and playing in professional sports of some sort. They go into strict training, don't they? I mean, they get up at certain times of day, they go and they lift weights uh, for those in athletics and a certain amount of weights and they're always trying to improve themselves. They watch what they eat, they make sure they're getting enough rest, they don't do activities that are going to endanger their progress or their health that would hinder them moving forward, upward, and beyond. They do that. It's serious to them. They're, they're training to go for first place, not second place, and they don't want to endanger that. And so they have to give it they're all. So what that means is there's a lot of times when, when they say no to what's second best or they say no to what's good in order to be able to say yes to what's best. Followers of Jesus, according to Paul, when it comes to the word, when it comes to living for Jesus, followers are to be committed to this kind of training because a person becomes what they are committed to. Jesus' followers are to be committed to this training because a person becomes what they are committed to. Commitments define a purpose, and a, uh, a person. We become what we're committed to. If we're not committed to anything, uh, it shows up in the way we life. If we're committed to the school, our schoolwork, it shows up in the way that we study and how we approach school, and we don't miss uh, we don't we don't miss any classes, whether it's online or in person. Right? I mean, if we're committed to to being the best in sports, we're getting up earlier, we're staying a little bit longer after practice, we're doing some things on our own that coach hasn't asked us to do. If we're committed to our work and to our job, uh, that shows in the hours we put in and the attitude that we have behind the desk or behind the wheel. I bring this up because today, 
Some of you are going to be making a commitment to the church. More importantly, a commitment to Jesus Christ. And this is the kind of commitment that, that Jesus is talking about. This is kind of the commitment that the word brings up for us, that we are to be committed. This is supposed to be a lifelong process of running to win the way we live our life. It's about running for first place, not being satisfied with second place. One of the ways we do that, the commitments that we're going to make, particularly our commitments to our vows of membership, commit to professing Jesus Christ as Lord. We commit to living for Christ, and we say that we will commit to living for Christ and supporting Jesus, being loyal to Christ through the church, through our prayers and presence and uh, giving and our serving and our witness. We want you to be committed to those things that, uh, in an appropriate way for your age and your spiritual maturity level. But as you grow into adulthood and as you go through school and high school and into college and, and, and on from there, you should be continuing to grow when it comes to your prayer life. You should be praying more and praying more often as you grow older. When, you, when you're 30 years down the road and you look back on this day, there should be an incredible difference between what you know now about who God is and the way you live your life in Christ as compared to this day. There are a lot of Christians that Paul identifies here and you, you know, I mean, we see them in this world who said yes to Jesus, but they are content with running for second place. Don't be that kind of Christian. Run for first place. Give it your best Get into the spiritual practices. You've got a whole lifetime ahead of you to learn. But the point is, as you leave from here today, after you've, some of you have been baptized and others have been, you've reaffirmed your faith and you uh, have made your vows to the church, when you rise up from here today, this is not game over. This is just the beginning of a lifelong practice of training to live for Jesus Christ all the days of your life. So let me give you a quick, uh, three quick tips on how to live your life so that you can uh, have the pace that will put you in first place. First, state your intentions to somebody. When you make a commitment to Jesus or whatever that commitment is to whoever, state your intentions to somebody. And that's really kind of what you're going to be doing today. When you come up here and you kneel uh, and we ask you the questions and you respond, you are stating to us and all those people who are watching today from around this country your intentions. Don't wait until you get it perfect. Don't wait until you get everything pulled together and then make your uh, commitment. You, you make your commitment now and state your intentions. And do it like Thomas Edison. Um, Thomas Edison had a habit that when he had an idea for an invention, he didn't keep it to himself, go into his lab and start working on it. And once he had it finalized and tested and perfected, then he called the newspapers and had a conference or a press release and he showed them what he did. He did it the opposite. He called the, the, the newspapers together for a press release. He told them what he was going to do. And now he was forced to go get her done. And then when he got it done, then he called the newspapers back and did it again. There's something about when you make a commitment, when you go public with something, uh, whether it's with everybody or it's just a person or two that you trust, there's something that happens. Now, now it's game on. So in essence, that's what you're doing here today. State your intentions. Secondly, get a workout buddy. All right? That sound, may sound kind of weird and odd for the, the life of a Christian, but I've got to tell you something. 
It's all throughout the scriptures. We get workout buddies. We, we, we walk through life with another disciple. Jesus sent the disciples out two by two. They traveled in a group with Jesus. Many of them did. Why? Because of all the, the interaction that was going back and forth and the teaching and the discussion. It's, it's hard to be committed to something on your own because we, I mean, we all know it, don't we? We can have the best intentions, we get started, but when we do something iron, then we, then we give up. Whether it's going to the gym and riding a bike every morning, or going out and going walking every morning, or at some point in the day, or, or with reading the scriptures. How many of us, myself included, right on our own, we pick up the Bible, I'm going to read through this this year, and we get through Genesis, and what a difference it makes when you have somebody who's going through this with you or somebody who's going to check in with you and say, hey, you told me you're going to be reading the Bible every day this year. How are you doing with that? You know, it's somebody who can help us do that next round, that can do that next uh, set of lifting weights when we're tired and we don't want to do it ourselves. They say, come on, man, you've got one more in you. I see it. You can do this. Or maybe you're not thinking about going to practice one day and your workout friend or your, your workout buddy says, hey, 4.15, we got to be over there. I don't feel like, no, no, no. We said we're going to do this. Let's do it. It just gives you a little something extra and you go. It's important for us to have others that we train with who are going to help us train and who we are going to help train. It doesn't take a whole lot to do that. In fact, the early Methodists used to be required <laughs> uh, up until the 1900s they used to be required to be part of a a group a small group they called them classes not because they were lecture based by any means of the imagination but these were groups of 10 people who would get together and encourage each other pray for each other how's how, how are you doing with living the life of christ this week how can we help right so we need to get a workout buddy and third, when you fall, get back up and pick up where you gave up. We are all going to set goals. We're all going to have some commitments. We're all going to say we're going to do something. And we start out, and then the inevitable happens. This is where it's really wonderful to have somebody who's walking with you. But if you don't, I just want to share this story remind you about Peter. Right? One of Peter, uh, Peter, one of Jesus's most, um, Peter's the kind of guy that would speak before he would think, right? And he just kind of jumped in and said it and went and did it. Uh, he bounced around. He seemed to be, um, I don't know if I'd say he had uh, ADHD, but, but that was, I mean, he just, that's kind of the personality he had. And so there was a time when Jesus told Peter that, you know, the day's coming, you're, you're going to deny me. And Peter says, what are you talking about? I would never deny you. I would give my life for you. I would lay it down for you, right? I mean, he, he's serious. He wants to do that. He made that commitment to Jesus. He would do so. And then that night in the Garden of Gethsemane when the soldiers came and he had been betrayed by Judas and uh, they came to take him, Peter at first stepped up. He drew a sword. But then after they took Jesus, Peter fled. He didn't do what he said he was going to do. He wasn't as committed as he wanted to be. You know that had to consume him for a while. But Peter fell down. It was... A month or so, a little bit longer than that, when he, I would say, got back up and picked up where he gave up. He had left Jerusalem, and he was now in Capernaum, up in Galilee, uh, uh, you know, a couple hours drive, well, a couple hours drive from Jerusalem these days, but a little bit longer than that back then. He's gone back to fishing. He didn't know what else to do. I, I think he was, maybe he was trying to find himself. Maybe he felt guilty. I, I'm not quite sure. But there was a day when he and some of the other guys were out fishing. 
and they weren't catching much. And there was a guy on the shoreline in John chapter 21 who calls out and says, hey, if you put your nets over there, can you imagine what that would have been like? Because they had heard that before, right? I mean, remember the story? I mean, some, some years before when Jesus was calling them from the, from, from the sea. There were other times when they had that experience and Jesus said, hey, put the, line, put the net over there. And boy, that just had to, Peter's heart had to have just skipped a beat. He realizes it's Jesus. Uh, he, he jumps from the boat. Maybe he tried to walk on water again. <laughs> uh, and he swam to the shoreline. And he goes and he sees Jesus, and Jesus has this conversation with him. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I, I do, and you know, I'm so sorry about what I did. Peter, do you love me? Yes, I, yeah, 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 I do. Hey, Peter, if you love me, go feed my sheep. And from that moment on, Peter never looked back. He picked himself back up where he had given up, and he now became the leader of the disciples and the early church and the movement of the Christian gospel. He was one of the most committed, driven men of the early church. So if you fall back, if you fall down, get back up, pick up where you gave up. Here's where we are. As you all make this commitment today, I want you to know that these vows are not for training for second place. Okay? I want you to give it your best. Jesus wants you to give it your all so that all life long you will be in pursuit of living the life Jesus calls you to live. I want those of you who are making a public commitment today to train hard as is appropriate for you. Not asking you to, to train hard like you're, you're, you're 57 years old, but to train hard if you're in sixth grade, to train hard like a sixth grader would. We can, we can help you figure that out. Parents can help you figure that out. Train like if you're in eighth grade, train like a, a train hard for an eighth grader. And as you grow older, you increase that training regimen. And for those of us who have already made this vow, I want to encourage you, I want to ask you, I want to invite you to renew your commitment to living the life of a follower of Jesus Christ with the intention that Paul mentions in today's word, that we run for the prize, that we're going for first place because we won't be satisfied with no place. And that may be hard, that may be scary, but you know what? That's what Jesus calls us to. And when you have some workout buddies who are walking with you and working out with you, when you've got a group of people who are cheering you on, when you're part of a church and you're active, it is so much easier and a lot more enjoyable. So today, who trains hoping for second place? Make this be a day that we're training for first. Let's pray. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, again, you are an incredible God, so worthy of more I ask today, Holy Spirit, that if there's somebody here today that is ready to make a commitment to you or renew their commitment, or if they've made, uh, renew their vows of membership, Lord God, to, to, to being people of prayer and participating in worship and in uh, Bible studies and you know, being present for those things and giving of their finances and serving you in some form and way, uh, maybe even through the church and being a positive witness to you, somehow making faith in Christ an option for somebody. Lord God, I want to renew my vows before you. I want to commit myself anew to running for the prize. And I'm asking the body to do that as well so that we can cross the finish line together. 
In the name of Christ, I pray. Amen. I invite you to continue to take this time to think about and pray about your commitment to the Lord uh, and to the vows of membership and what that means while we sing this song. brothers and sisters in Christ. Through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Through confirmation and through the reaffirmation of our faith, we also renew the covenant declared at our baptism and acknowledge what God is doing for us and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. I'm going to call out uh, individuals' names, and as I do so, I invite you to stand right where you're at. We're going to have the whole class that is here standing at the same time while I ask you the first set of questions, so you're going to do that right from where you are at. Uh, we're going to be presenting here to bat for you all for uh, baptism here in just a moment, uh, Elliot Boyd. His compadre, Ethan Boyd, and for baptism, McLean Durden. Those who are going to be reaffirming their faith and being confirmed in their faith and joining the church as well, uh, I know him as Isaac, Isaac Cotton, Landon Leach, Samuel Patton, and Catherine Rogers. I, I got to tell you something. Um, this group of students was just a blast to be with. Um, I wasn't sure that how I was going to handle or be able to do Sunday school before worship in the mornings, and you guys made it a blast. Lukey can tell you. We were both excited to get up and to be uh, in in 
during the Sunday school hour with you guys, and we just learned so much from you. So thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, I'm going to ask you several questions here. I'll give you the answer at the end, okay? Uh, so you don't, have to, you don't have to worry about that. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? And your answer would be, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? And your answer would be, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? And your answer would be, I do. According to the grace given to you, will you be a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in this world? And your answer would be, all right, thank you. You may be seated. I want to invite the church to respond now to them with, by following what we have up here on the screen, please. Do you as Christ's body, the church, Reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these confirmands now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Now let us join together in professing the Christian faith. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This time I'm going to pray over the baptismal waters. We're going to ask the Holy Spirit to consecrate this water so that it becomes uh, holy uh, for this occasion and that God would use it to cleanse us uh, from our sins for those who are going to be baptized. So let's pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit and bless this gift of water and on those who are about to receive it. Use it to wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness through their lives that dying and being raised with Christ they may share in his final victory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, I pray. Amen. Um, I want to ask uh, Lukey and Jan, if you two would please join me up here. And I will be inviting our families to come up one at a time uh, for the baptism. Uh, you'll be baptized, and then I will also ask you the membership vow question. Um, and... Uh, after that, you'll remain kneel, kneeling, and Jan Gregory has a special uh, heart-made, hand-made uh, stole that she's going to place over you. Uh, at that point, you may rise from the prayer kneel, and you're going to walk past the altar, and uh, Miss Lukey is going to give you a Bible and your membership certificates. We ask that if you come up this side, you're going to leave out that side and walk on around, okay? So to begin with, I want to invite the Boyd family to please come forward. And 
I think we're going to do, do Elliot. We'll do Elliot first. So Elliot, come up here and have a kneel. Yeah, yeah. What? Those who are able to make the steps, please come on up, and I want you to, to gather around him. You can come on in here and get, get around. In fact, I want you to put your hands on his shoulders. Elliot, is it your desire to be baptized and to be a committed follower of Jesus Christ all the days of your life? Elliot Boyd, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now may the Holy Spirit work within you that being born through water in the Spirit, you will be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. And all of God's people said, amen. Now, remain kneeling. Is it also your desire to become a member of the United Methodist Church? We be loyal to Jesus Christ and support the Lord through the United Methodist Church, through your prayers, your presence, your giving, your service, and your witness, and your answer, yes. Very good. Dan? Welcome. Okay. If you're just going over this way, Miss Lucky will give you your Bible. Now, Ethan has elected to do something unique. In the United Methodist tradition, the Wesleyan tradition, uh, we believe in baptizing uh, by immersion or by the, the sprinkling or by pouring taking a pitcher of water and pouring it over your head. And I see, <laughs> go ahead and get the phones out. <laughs> um, is it your desire to profess your faith in Jesus Christ and to be baptized today? Very good. This is for you, all right? All right, Lukey, if you'd bring the bowl on over. Now what I want you to do is you're going to have to lean your head way over there, buddy. There you go. This is a little <laughs> bit different, isn't it? You good? Okay. Ethan Steele Boyd, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. There you go. If you need to wipe your head off, feel free. Remain seated, or seated, <laughs> kneeling. And is it your desire to become a member of the United Methodist Church? Will you be loyal to Jesus Christ through the United Methodist Church, through your prayers, your presence, your giving, your service, and your witness? And your answer would be, amen. Great. Jan? All right, welcome to the family. All right, yeah, thank you. We'll just keep that there in case. Uh, now I want to invite uh, McLean to come on up and bring uh, Mark and Kimberly with you. So I can tell you're starting to have second thoughts. You want to do the pouring, don't you? No? Okay. McLean, it's been a joy to see you um, growing in your faith in Christ. Um, is it your desire to put your faith in Jesus and to be baptized as a follower of his today? Okay, McLean. I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the work that the Spirit has begun in you be brought to completion 
that you would live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ all the days of your life. Amen. Now, is it also your desire to be a committed follower of Christ through the United Methodist Church? Is it your desire that you will serve Christ through this church, through your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Amen. Sam? Welcome to the family. At this time, we are going to go to our confirmants who have been baptized previously and who are going to reaffirm those, uh, the, the baptism that was done in their name and also take the vows of membership. So I want to start with uh, uh, Isaac. If Isaac, if you would bring your family with you, we'd appreciate that. And after Isaac will be Brother Landon. I invite you to, to kneel here. And what I'm going to do here, this, this is not, again, this is not a baptism. This is a reaffirmation of the vows. And so, is it your desire to profess your faith in Jesus Christ and to reaffirm your faith in Jesus as your Lord and Savior today? Very good. Remember your baptism and be thankful. May the work that the Holy Spirit began on you that day that you were brought before the Lord and baptized, may that day be brought to completion that you would be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ all the days of your life. Amen. Now, is it also your desire to become a committed member of the United Methodist Church? If so, will you be loyal to Jesus Christ through the United Methodist Church, through your prayers and your presence, your giving, your service, and your witness? And your answer would be, very good. I'm glad to hear that. Dan? All right, welcome to the family. All right, Landon, if you'd bring mom and dad up with you, that would be wonderful. Landon, is it your desire to reaffirm your faith in Jesus as the Christ and the Lord of your life today? Landon, remember your baptism and be thankful. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the promise associated with baptism that your parents brought forth to you be brought to completion. And may the Holy Spirit enable you to live a life as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, is it also your disciple, to, to, to disciple, your decision to be a faithful member of this church and to be in prayer and to be present and to, to give and to serve and to be a witness to Jesus? Fabulous. Dan? Welcome to the family. All right, Samuel. Yeah. Yeah. You, 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 if you all want to come, you can. Don't mean to put you on the spot, but I'm, I guess I did. How you doing? Good. Yeah. Come on up. Feel free to place your hands on them. Just uh, uh, the ancient practice of the church of laying on of hands. Um, come on in here. You bet. 
Samuel, is it your desire to uh, reaffirm your faith that Jesus is the Christ and the Lord of your life today? It's your desire to reaffirm that baptism that was done in your, in your name early on. Amen. Samuel, remember your baptism and be thankful. Now may the Holy Spirit bless you and keep you. May he bring to completion the work that was begun in you the day of your baptism and enable you and empower you to be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ all the days of your life. Amen. Now, is it also your desire to be a, uh, a committed, active member of the United Methodist Church? And will you do that by supporting the church through your prayers, your presence, your giving, your service, and your witness? And very good. Blessings. All right. Welcome to the church, Samuel. That's right. You know what? Let me no, let, let me pray for her. I would I would pray for her in a second. We will not, if there's anybody that wants to be baptized today, we will do that. Catherine, would you please come forward with your family? Or Catherine Michelle, I believe is. Yeah. So Catherine, is it your desire to reaffirm um, the vows of baptism that were made in your name and in your honor uh, as an infant. Good. It's your desire to kneel here today and to acknowledge that Jesus is the Christ and the Lord of your life. Catherine, remember your baptism and be thankful. Now may the power of the Holy Spirit rest upon you and bring to completion the work that was begun on you the day that you were brought before the Lord and baptized. May he give you the power, the presence, whatever it takes to be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ all the days of your life. Amen. Now is it also your desire to become an active, committed member of the United Methodist Church? Will you support the church through your prayers? your presence, your giving, your service, and your witness. Fabulous. So glad to hear that. Jan? <laughs> Welcome to the family, Catherine. I'm going to invite the congregation stand and if you were at home or wherever you might be please stand and join us as well uh, we have a congregational response to all of our newest followers of Christ and the newest members in our church but I'm going to do something here there we go. members of the household of God I commend these persons to your love and to your care do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Amen. Remain standing.
standing, please, as we I just want to simply remind you that as we prepare to depart and go into this world as faithful disciples of Jesus Christ, that uh, you have an opportunity to give to continue the mission and ministry of Jesus Christ. Uh, I want to, uh, as members, one of the things that we make vows to is to, to give to the Lord. And so as you leave today, uh, as you depart from being online, we invite you to give. Uh, we have an offering basket here on the way out for those who would like to physically place something in there. If you want to give, we have an online portal. If you want to continue to give to the ministries that way, or always feel free to, to continue to, uh, to send in a check to the, to the church for us. That's what makes days like this possible. Now receive the Lord's benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his glorious peace. And everybody said, amen. amen. Have a blessed week, everybody. And if families want any pictures up here, please feel free. Blessings. Blessings.